This is Core Scientist book review for the month of June 2020. And this month's book is Science, Christianity, Conflict or Coherence by Dr. Henry Schiffer. Dr. Henry Schiffer was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He is a fellow of many chemical societies, including the Royal Society of Chemistry in the UK and American Chemical Society. He is one of the most cited chemists in the world. Um, his book, Science and Christianity, is a compilation of his lectures, which he has delivered in countries in America, in Europe, in Asia, and likewise in, in Africa. This book on its own has 10 chapters. And the central message in the, in the book is that there are Christians in the past as well as in the present that have committed to science at the same time committed to Christian faith. Permit me to read from page 14 of the book. Dr. Henry said, science developed in a Christian environment. And he also cited a 15th century, 16th century scientist, Francis Bacon. Yet the word of Francis Bacon. Let no one think or maintains that a person can search too far or to be too well studied in either the book of God's word or the book of God's works. Bacon is talking about the Bible as the book of God's world and also nature as the book of God's works. He is encouraging us to learn as much as possible about both the Bible and science. Dr. Henry said, I have taken Bacon's advice personally. I have read through the Bible more than a dozen times since I became a Christian myself in 1973. These are some of the phrases or statements you can find in this book. But what intrigued me most in this book is in chapter 8. And permit me to read some of the questions which, which Dr. Henry has tried to answer in chapter 8. I've listed out the questions are more than 20 questions, but I've listed out 8 of those questions and the answer he gave to them. Number one question from chapter 8 is, is it reasonable to be a scientist and a Christian? Yes, because so many of the pioneers of physical sciences were committed Christian. It stated that about 60% of Nobel laureates in physics are Christians or with Christian background. This is a known fact. Question two is, who made God? This is a universal question asked in all cultures by a person of all ages, especially above age three. Dr. Henry said, we exist in a derived, finite and fragile way, but the Creator exists as eternal, self-sustaining and necessary. Third question is, can God make a rock so big that he can lift it? God is omnipotent. Omnipotence does not mean that God can literally do everything. He was citing Westminster Shorter Catechism. God can do all his holy will. For instance, God cannot sin. God cannot lie. God cannot change his nature. But all that God wills and promises, he can and he will do. Fourth question, why do bad things happen to good people? This is a very big question we always ask, even in our world now. Why do bad things always happen to good people? Dr. Shaver's answer was found from a street war in California when he was driving. The world asked a large print. Most people wanted to serve God. Most people wanted to serve God. Then this large print was followed by a smaller print 
that says always or usually in an advisory capacity. You cannot be God's advisor. The chemist pointed out if God rescues from every problem those who are true to Jesus, Christians would not need faith. That would be a great big insurance policy and there will be lines of selfish people that will be ready to sign up for this. He emphasized the need for us to understand that suffering is part of what God has planned or put in place for us even as Christians. He said, suffering is very much part of God's plan for our brief sojourn upon this planet. The next question. Five. Hasn't the overall influence of Christianity been negative? Dr. Henry quoted Dr. Kenneth Latoray of Yale University, standing professor of missions and oriental history. Christianity has created more schools, more theories of missions, more theories of education rather, impelled men to fight suffering, whether that suffering has come from natural disaster, from war, from disease. The Christian faith has built more hospitals, for instance, inspired the emergence of nursing and medical professions, and further countless movements for public health and for relief and prevention of famine. My question is, what legacy is 21st century Christian building? Christ's coming might be now, as well it might be in 25th century. What legacy are we building? What legacy do we want to leave behind as Christians in this 21st century? The sixth question is, how can the loving God send people to hell? This question was answered summarily as, how can a perfectly righteous God let self-centered people into heaven? How can a perfectly righteous God let self-centered people into heaven? What a question and, and what a answer for that question. Question seven is, why are there so many hypocrites in the church? Why are there so many hypocrites in the church? Many hypocrites in the church. Dr. Henry agrees that regrettably that is such in the church, but God hates pretense. He further challenged the readers to look at Christ and who he is from the Bible rather than focusing on the footsteps of those who follow or those who profess to follow Jesus. He said, and I quote, Christianity stands or fall on the life of Christ, not the performance of his followers. And I put it this way in my own words, the presence of hypocrisy should not put you off to hold on to Jesus Christ. The last question Dr. Henry put forward and tries to answer is what should one make of all the different denominations within Christianity? Shiva was explicit to exclude Mormonism, Jehovah Witness, Christian Science, Scientology and other groups that he felt gross, they grossly deviate from central Christian teaching. He used the ice cream theory to explain uh, this question, to give the answer to this question rather, that denominations are like flavors of ice cream. While we may disagree on the detail, we agree on the big picture. And what's the big picture? The big picture is, it was all about a man, it was all about a cross, it was all about the blood that he shed so that I will not be lost. That is the big picture. This book, Science and Christianity, Conflict of Coherence, resound the need for us to know that there are numerous Christians in the past as well as now that are committed to Christian faith at the same time committed to science. And on that note, let me unveil the book for next month, which is 
cross current interaction between science and faith by Collins Rosen. We'll look at this in the month of July. Thank you very much for your time and please subscribe to our YouTube channels, Facebook and any other social media we have. Thank you very much. My name is Omolulu Fagua. Let there be science, let there be godliness.